in one place you say that there might be some truth to the ideas associated with the singularity at the very largest scale of reality. Um, but then sure. eventually end up concluding in that same chapter that the rupture and the singularity share one thing in common, and that is that they can never be verified by the living. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, what I was trying to get at there is that if um, the, the difference between a religious fanatic and somebody who's, like, sort of um, a religious non-fanatic <laughs> Is is sort of in this sort of certainty about imminent timing of of whatever their um, eschaton is, whatever whatever their end of days is, and so um, if uh, if you're like for instance, there's, there are these billboards all over the United States now that the world's going to end on later this month, right? Mm-hmm. And there are a lot of people who've sold everything and and all that because they're awaiting the rapture this month. And, you know, it's when you believe that you know when it's happening and it's soon that you really turn into a nutcase and you do harm to yourself and others. And in my mind, the singularity movement is, is sort of doing that. There's, now, uh, speaking more broadly, if we're not talking about, you know, it just being automatic because chips reach some stage in the Moore's Law of Progress or something like that, but if we're talking about some sort of long-term thing where something about humanity as a whole or something about the universe as a whole experiences some sort of uh, state transition, some sort of phase phase transition into something else, and that some sort of version of information technology has something to do with that. I mean, of course I'm not going to argue against that. I mean, I don't, I don't want the humanity to stay f- the same for a million years or 10 million years. I don't want us to die. The only alternative, therefore, is that we'd sort of transform into something. And so it would be ridiculous to argue against that possibility. I mean, it's also very possible there'd be something even more wonderful that could happen that we don't even know how to articulate yet. Um, but but whatever. So, so I'm not arguing against some sort of ultimate possibilities. That I think that would be also crazy. Um, but this notion that we have some way of knowing it'll be in, in 20 years or something is genuinely destructive, and, and, the, and, that, and it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sign of fanaticism. Mm-hmm. So, so in that sense, you have a very serious disagreement with uh, people with such as Ray Kurzweil, who have a very sort of a specific timeline, if you will, about how things would most likely unfold. Well, I mean, I, I haven't kept up with Ray lately, but um, in times in the past where we've interacted about this, um, it's actually been pretty fun. We used to actually put on pretty good joint joint talks and stuff, and. Uh, at least there was a time when he had a sense of humor about it. I don't. I I just haven't really kept up with him lately, so I don't. I don't know if that's still true. But um, his books don't don't convey it lately, at any rate. Um, so, um, you know, serious disagreement. Uh, I mean, with some people, I do. Sure. I would really. I'm not really sure. I mean, sometimes I think he's in on the joke. It's kind of hard to tell. Because <laughs> he's gone on the record with like perhaps at least dozens and maybe hundreds of very specific predictions attached to very specific time frames. <laughs> and, and, and so that's why. Well, yeah, I mean, actually, um, I, uh, I haven't played that game as publicly as Ray, but, you know, a lot of people in technology sort of do very similar things about, like, you know, when... Um, when will there be universal tracking of people just because of all the sensors and the, you know, the questions like that. And I've also sort of made guesses. And on the whole, it's not that hard to get these things right um, because you can sort of see trends of progress. And uh, I, I, think, I think my disagreement with Ray isn't so much about any particular capability that might come about, but the philosophy of how to think about it and how to and a philosophy of how to engineer well with with the capabilities we have in a given era. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, I'm afraid we're kind of approaching um, towards the end of our interview here. Mm-hmm. Um, so let me ask you this: um, in your book, you often give examples of um, how and why Wikipedia in some sense impoverishes both the information that it contains as well as its presentation. So I want to ask you, what is the best place to find more information about yourself other than Wikipedia? (laughs) 
my Wikipedia entry is like all wrong again. It's so funny. I have this. There's a well. There's a well-known episode where I was trying to get the Wikipedia to not call me a filmmaker because I I made one film, but it was really crappy, so I didn't think I should be called one. So. Um, I <laughs> it took forever. Now they have like all this stuff. They have me in, um, overly involved with the Connect interface and this sort of stuff. It's just like crazy with those guys. Anyway, um, I mean, my thought is I have this book out there, and if somebody really wants to know what I'm saying, they can read the book. And, and uh, you're talking about uh, you're not a gadget, right? You're not a gadget. Yeah. 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 Any other references, or uh, the book is the best starting point? Yeah, probably. Or if if somebody is just like so filled with curiosity of the Kent Stand, it's just waiting until I come around to give a talk wherever you live, which will happen eventually, and then just come to the talk, you know. Do you plan to be coming anytime soon around Toronto in Canada? Because I'd love to come and uh, meet you in yeah, person. Yeah, I, I actually I was I was in Toronto last week, uh, but I will be back. I'll be there. I'll do a thing at Idea City, and. I think I'm doing something else with some sort of McLuhan, something or other. So, yeah, I'm in Toronto a lot, actually. Oh, that's fantastic. So I'll try and keep up then and, and come and uh, visit uh -huh. personally one of your talks. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so then, if there's one thing that you would like for our listeners to take away from this podcast interview today, what would you like by, that by to way, be? On, um, by, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I did a... I, an event that I thought was kind of cool, and I don't know if there's a video of it out or not, but it was a, a talk with Tim Wu, who wrote the Master Switch at the, uh, um, was moderated by the dean of the business school at University of Toronto. And if that's out, that that was kind of a cool, that was an interesting session, it's worth looking at. Mm -hmm. I'll okay. look for a link and, and see if I can find one and post it yeah. um, at the end of our... I don't, I don't know if it was recorded or anything, I really have no idea. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so you, sorry, you were going to ask another question. So if I mean the the last question of all my guests usually is the same, and it is, um, if you have uh, one message to our listeners today, what would you like that to be? Oh well, you know, I I guess what I would say since this is a singularity theme thing, probably a lot of the people who are listening are really into singularity stuff for transhumanism or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I guess what I want to say is um, just be open to the fact that, you know, people change and you might come to have different views and you don't have to feel like you've sort of, I don't know, like gone soft or, or, or um, uh, betrayed your younger self if you come to a different view. It's, it's uh, healthy to change and think from different perspectives and it's it's good to just uh, try on different perspectives from you know once in a while and uh, um, don't you know don't don't fall into the trap of feeling like you're obliged to be a true believer or or like um, you know it, it it's just not it, it's it's not ultimately to your benefit it's to the benefit of somebody else always you know throughout human history and uh, so you know think for yourself and um, it's not about listening to me it's about listening to yourself and uh, just you know. To, uh, try to not not buy into anything too much you know that's simple <laughs> excellent well um i think on that note uh i would like to thank jerome lanier for taking time to be here with us today thank you very much jerome oh thank you all right well good luck take care